Well, for the first time this week, we're able to uh, thank you and welcome you to the 54th Annual FEB National National presented by PC General Store. We just lose all qualifying night. Your winner tonight, Brian Brown. Second place, Sam Hickman Jr. And the third place, Carrie Mass on the far end. Again, we'll do this like usual. We'll open up to the floor for any questions. Guys, uh, Brian, get the microphone in front of you. If you just pass it back and forth, that'd be awesome. Questions? Well, we have Brian uh, talk us through that last restart that came for eight. Yeah, I, um, I wasn't sure what Sam was going to do. He, we caught Sam in traffic, and then he made a couple good moves, and he was gone. He was going to win the race if, if it wasn't for that red. So I wasn't quite sure what he was going to do. And um, he took off pretty slow, and my motor just didn't get going as well as I, would, I had hoped. And um, I was going to kind of throw someone a little bit of a Hail Mary and see if I could slide, and I went across. I went across and stuck. And I got a good run, and... I seen him out the corner of my eye and he, he was going to block the bottom like any smart driver should do and I had flashbacks of two weeks ago with me and Ian and getting tore up and torn, you know, getting crashed and I, you know, I backed out and said, well, I guess I'll run second. And I got a good run off of, of four and uh, stuck the bottom again and that time uh, I got a little bit further up beside him and thankfully he didn't chop me that time and we were able to go on and um, just kind of get clean air and kind of get going. Uh, Hats off to him. He, he doesn't run here too often, and he's been really, really strong the last two weeks, 360 Nationals in here, so uh, he, he's doing a good job. And kerry has been the fastest car. I've raced with them guys a lot. To me, he's been the fastest car and the fastest team in the country. And uh, to beat these two guys on this stage uh, is, is a pretty awesome accomplishment. Add all the questions? Sam, talk about your race there. You were looked like you were... It was yours, and then you had that red. Yeah, I mean, uh, I thought I thought we were really good in traffic, to be honest. Uh, we were a little freer than most guys, so when we got into that dirty air, we were actually able to kind of rotate the bottom and, and even rotate the top a little bit. Uh, I knew Brian was coming on me, though. You can tell he's back there. Uh, he's he's always pretty smart here, so uh, I knew he's making smart decisions. And I knew if I if I didn't get the lead fast enough, he he pounce on it and take the lead himself. So. Uh, no, we got through some lap cars really good there, and uh, like I said, you know, we definitely did not need that red. Uh, I felt like we were going to get going and, and maybe get gone, but, uh, you know, hats off to him. I mean, they've had an awesome car, been dominant all, for the last two weekends here, so uh, they're definitely a car to beat this weekend, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can get ours a little bit better. I wish we'd have been tightened up a little bit, but, you know, it's part of it sometimes. Sam, on the last weekly show, you chose to run the 410 and not the 360. It looks like that's paying off for you, obviously. Yeah, you know, the reason I chose to run the 410 is I've only ran like five 410 races all year. So uh, I knew that, you know, I knew we needed needed 410 laps. And, and to hit the bottom here at the 410s tough sometimes. And, you know, I, I got prepared, you know, with the 360 is pretty easy to do it with the 410. So... I just made sure that I wanted to do that with 410 so we could kind of get ready for this weekend especially because this weekend pays so well. Eric? For, for Terry, how good did that feel in the D race to be able to go from the fourth row and transfer? That's me and Brown have a bit of a joke each week about who's going to put four in the fluff. <laughs> we had a lot of fun with that. And, uh, he was saying that before the eight brown was going, where are you going to go? And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to take a conservative, man. <laughs> exactly what he said. And then after it, I went, four in the fluff, boy. <laughs> but I was, he raised it just, I was not expecting to be able to do that. I, you know, um, you know, to be honest, we're all expecting every one-lane racetrack and we're not going to do much. And uh, it just opened up up there and I got some clean air. I really just went high to chase clean air and sit the front of the nose down and uh, just kind of got my own line up there and Brian Morris and Engine Horse power around everybody. It was just uh, mind-bending, mind-boggling to me, but uh, it was pretty exciting at the same time. Yeah, so you can see, I was kind of hoping he would have just kind of tucked in there so I didn't have to make such a ballsy move myself. So, <laughs> no, he's, it's, he's a good friend of mine. It's fun to be able to have a guy you can say, hey, Joe can say, what are you going to do? And he proved he could do it. But before we go, I just want to thank Joel from FVP and all the people from FVP, they're obviously the presenting sponsor of the Knoxville Nationals. 
appreciate all they do. Bob Myers with KC General Stores back here. They're also a, a, a huge part of this event in my team. And um, <laughs> hats off to, to Knoxville Raceway um, and especially the Duncans for being able to get this event in because I'm telling you at 6.45 or 7 o'clock when I was hot lapping, I was cussing them right left and center. And they, uh, they proved me wrong that the track came around. It was a pretty good track for the conditions. And uh, I just want to thank all my partners, all my sponsors, my families here. Thank them for all their support. And just uh, we're really looking forward to Saturday night. Hey, Carrie, talk about your, your last couple weeks here. I mean, you're your point leader. I mean, it's only night one, but you ever expect to be point leader? No. Um, I really haven't expected anything. Um, you know, you just work, you work hard. You, you, you learn pretty quick in this sport not to expect anything. You don't deserve anything. And nothing's going to get given to you. So the last month has just been incredible. I mean, I just still can't get my head around it. But uh, it's, it's, uh, I know one thing, it's so exciting to be part of it. And the boys in the car are just doing a bloody fantastic job. It's just, I think they think you drive itself. So <laughs> I better be nice to my owner so someone else doesn't try to get in that car. But it's incredible. Brian, the car was so good, you could run high, low, but you were really good over in turn one around the bottom. Talk about how well the car performed over in turn one, and that seemed like where you made up the most ground in it. Yeah, I'm a firm believer if you're going to especially beat Donnie Schatz at the Knoxville National, you're going to have to be able to pull off and run the bottom time to time throughout the AMA. And um, that's something that I'm not very good at the bottom. So that's something we've really been concentrating on, and trying to get my car more comfortable. and. Just more than anything, it's the driver down there. You gotta pedal it, you gotta lift, you gotta run the brake, you gotta know when to pick the throttle back up. And it's something that um, it takes a you know, to run the top, it takes it takes talent, but just to run the bottom it's just a lot tougher. And um, something we've really been working on and I think our work has paid off to be able to go down there and peel off and hit the bottom. It's, we always talk about Donnie Shots runs on top for twenty five laps and then all of a sudden just peels to the bottom, hits it perfect. And in order to beat him and guys like these, you've got to be able to make those moves. And um, I wasn't sure I could do it, but that's huge for my confidence going into Saturday, knowing that I can stick it if I need to stick it. You know? Just uh, it's pretty special. We've uh, we've had a pretty good run here the last week and a half, and um, hopefully we can just continue to have the success. Ryan, any soreness still from the wreck? Is it all gone now at this point? What well, wreck? <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. I mean, it's uh, my neck was sore the first couple of nights there, but you know, all this racing obviously built built your neck back up, and I feel great. I mean, it's probably the best I felt in the race car as far as mentally, physically, and confidence wise, and probably forever. And it, it helps when, like Kerry said, when you get good cars, it makes your job a lot easier. And um, like I said, there, I grew you Chad and Morgan, Zach Thomas, Greg King, Schnook, uh, Clem, everybody that works on that thing, they do a solid job. And, I think that's uh, that's what makes you a, a good race car driver and a good team. Good, good makes results like this is having a good car. You're trying to talk to your crew during that last yellow. What was going on there? I told them I only had three tear offs left, huh. <laughs> and their answer was, "We'll just pass them, and you don't have to worry about them." So, well, I guess that's one way to look at it. You know, it's you know we went through so many that we were in that long long green flag run, and traffic was tough, and you're going through two or three tear offs a lap, and. I didn't realize how many I had left. I felt up there. I said six laps, three tear offs. Um, either better block, block a little with my hand or get the lead here, and we were lucky enough to get the lead. How about you, other two? What did you do on tear offs? He was out, he said. So. Nice. <laughs> I mean, like Brian said, you just you get such an immense view of what your personal situation is that it might you might think it's affecting you at the time. And uh, uh, like I have no idea, but like Brian said, the Duncans just absolutely did a bloody sterling job. I and mean, the track was, from what we had to deal with, the drizzles all day, rain yesterday, and, and to get that got a racetrack, and it was fair and qualifying, and Look, I wasn't probably as wide as people would like in the heat, but you know, some cars still did it, so it was amazing. Sam, how many 410 races have you done this year? Five. Oh, it's hard to say. Probably, I mean, do we have to count Florida? Because I blew the engine up every night. So. <laughs> uh, I would say five. Any other questions?
questions? Sam, you mentioned five. To come in here and finish second in a race like this, and it looks like you haven't run all year. I mean, it's got to feel pretty good for your confidence moving forward. Yeah, you know, I've always told myself I'd always be the guy that worked on my own car because I never want to be left in a bad situation. And it has paid off a lot, you know. Uh, you know, I'm pretty smart with my car. You know, obviously not quite as smart as these guys are with their operation, but uh, you know, I'm learning every day, and we get better and better. And uh, you know, I just I just keep all that knowledge stored away, and it's definitely helped me, obviously, for this weekend not being in 410 very often, and just taking notes of what we've done wrong in the past and, and maybe making the right changes to uh, to make a car better. And it's just like these guys say, when you get in a good race car, it makes you look really good. And, uh, you know, and, and we've had a really good race car, so it's made me look really good. Ryan, talk a little bit about, uh, we asked Kerry about his last month. Talk a little bit about your last two weeks. I mean, it's podium finish, podium finish, podium finish. Yeah, I'll give you just a brief synopsis. This car we're running tonight is the car we ran in Knoxville Nationals the last two years. We won three in a row here to put it away, thinking, okay, we'll save that for the Knoxville Nationals. We bring a brand new Maxim out. It's better than we had. We uh, start six, had a quick time here two weeks ago, started six in the heat, won it, and was going for the lead there, and got into it with Ian Madison, and spun around, stuck at the fence, bent the car in 25 different directions, and broke our Knoxville Nationals motor all in one night. So um, that's the good thing about having Charlie Garrett engines and Maxim chassis. We, we pulled another engine out that we thought was as just as good. He just had got it off the dyno, worked 24 hours straight, got to get it good. And we come back here and um, we're solid at the Cappy Classic, solid at the 360 Nationals, and here we are. So um, I, after that night, I went home and got checked out the hospital at 4 in the morning, went to bed, got back up at 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. My crew guys were still at my shop working. They didn't go to bed. They knew how important these two weeks were. They wanted to go, get ahead of the game. To me, I just don't want crew guys. I want guys that are like that. And, you know, Chad Morgan and Zach Thomas and Greg, they were still at my shop at 1230, working their butts off, making sure we were prepared for these two weeks. To me, I get to come up here and look famous and talk to you guys, but those are the guys that are the unsung heroes. Those are the ones that put the hours in, like, you know, like Tyler's did with his team. And um, so it's been a very, very good two weeks. Not because I'm just driving good, because of the work that the guys have put in and, and uh, the effort. And I can't thank those guys enough. I pay them every week, but what they do for me in my career, I'll never be able to pay. Brownie, do you feel better about your chances this year than maybe years past with all this momentum that you have right now? I feel just as good as we ever have. I think last year we thought we could win it, and we came close. I think this year I feel like I've learned a lot of things mentally that will help me come Saturday afternoon, um, I hope. And um, we're gonna give it our best shot. You know, you know, I've been saying in my head for a week and a half or two weeks, yeah, we gotta beat shots, but I, I honestly believe this guy here is gonna be the guy to beat. He's just been that, everywhere I went, he's been that strong. His confidence is sky high, his team's sky high, and I feel like that, you know, shots will be in the hunt, but I think so will he. It'll be fun, I mean, we and Kerry are good friends. There's no way we ensure we want to race each other hard and for, for on the biggest stage. So, yes, I think we are ready as a team and hopefully um, come over here and run good and run another second or third. So be it. We're going to give it all and hopefully try to win this thing. All right, if that's it, we'll go ahead and wind the guys.